This Week in Radio Tech, episode 208, is brought to you by the five brands of the Telos Alliance, supporting radio, television, and internet broadcasters with high performance equipment for compelling audio quality and consistency. On the web at telosalliance.com. We're live in Las Vegas at NAB 2014. Chris Tobin and Kirk Harnack, me, are bringing you engineers and company execs one after another in this fast-paced Highlights of NAB show. We'll find out what's hot this year and what your fellow engineers are asking and talking about. Hey, everybody. It's This Week in Radio Tech. I'm Kirk Harnack, your host. Glad that you're along. We're not in the usual place, are we? We're at live at NAB at, uh, what's the name of this building? Las Vegas Convention Center. This is my co-host, Chris Tobin, the best-dressed engineer in radio. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh. You have the lights on yours, so. I'm just lucky that the guy I, 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 I flagged down is the same size as me. Oh, aren't we lucky? <laughs> yeah, that'd be, we're all lucky, I suppose. This is This Week in Radio Tech, the show where we talk about everything from the microphone to the light bulb at the top of the tower, the big flashing beacon. We should get a beacon company on here. Oh, that'd, boy, be that'd, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, the I, LED beacons are great. I wonder if they can bring a beacon over at probably. There's mm. a plug over there. And we they, won't see anything. Oh, yeah, that's true. One big All bright right. light. <laughs> we're having fun with this show because we're going to be interviewing lots of fun folks, engineers and, and vendors and en- people who invent stuff. What's that? Can you see it? Oh, oh yeah. That's reflecting now. Uh, it's not a matte finish. Not a matte finish. One of our interviews. Oh, yeah. Let's get right to it. We're going to jump right to it. Our show's brought to you by the Telos Alliance. Thanks very much to Frank Fody and the whole crew for uh, Tim Carroll and everyone for sponsoring This Week in Radio Tech. And uh, we're going to get right to the fun stuff here. Let's. Uh, <laughs> hey! Not you. Hey, oh, come on, say hello. I'm we, out of place. Hey, we, hey guys, not how you out doing? of place. We come said on, fun yeah. stuff, and Chris Crump from Comrex jumps see, in. See what happens. Works. Okay, can you come back in a few? Yeah, years? I'm going to come back. Okay, good. Good. All right. Let Let's All bring right. in this fellow. This is Willis Chung from DJI. Hello. How's yeah. it going? Looking sharp. It's going good. And I like your suit, your shirt. <laughs> I mean, I got this little T-shirt with a giant DJI. Logo. This is Elvis Day. You didn't get the memo. No, I didn't get the. Am memo. I the I only one who got the memo? Yes. I got the cover sheet. I'll bet Andrew Zarian sent the memo out just to me. Hey, Kirk, dress up like Elvis. Everybody else is. <laughs> so DJI is this company that makes these cool, awesome, cool quadcopters. Quadcopters, and, and hexacopters, octocopters. And this year we announced our handheld gimbal that's able to carry up to 16 pounds. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So 16 carrying pounds? 16, 16, yeah. 16, 16, 16, 16 pounds. Six pounds. Yeah, exactly. So, right. so you may be asking, why is a helicopter, drone, and camera uh, you know, firm on this week in radio tech? Well, just because it's freaking cool. That's why. Actually, there's there's some good uh, broadcast applications for this technology. So, Willis, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I kind of interrupted you. Go ahead and oh, good. tell us more about uh, about DJI and, and the sure. Well, shoppers. this year we announced the new Phantom 2 Vision Plus, which enables uh, a three-axis gimbal. So now you can use like that, that 14-megapixel camera on the um, on the quadcopter, the Phantom cam- uh, copter, and uh, and take pictures and smooth video 1080p. Uh, so people such as agriculture, uh, fire department, um, and just people fixing roofs or anything. It's, it's good for any application out there. Now, and, there are some YouTube videos that, yeah. well, there's already a tower crew on the tower. Yes. But the helicopter goes up yeah. the tower and looks at stuff. Great for inspection. You get a live feed straight to your phone, Android or iOS. And you can take pictures, videos, download it straight to your phone while your copter is still in the air. Now, what if, okay, I've been on towers before. Yeah. And I have dropped a wrench. Okay. Now, could the quadcopter bring a little wrench back up to me? The quadcopter is able to carry the payload. Yeah. But um, I guess you you're able to use it for that application as well. So that's how awesome it is. I mean, it, it might weigh a, <laughs> it might weigh a pound. Is a pound too a pound much? Pound is totally fine. Really? How much yes. will that for that quadcopter carry? Uh, we've had a few stress tests for it. Mm. I don't have an exact amount, but um, I'll say a pound is no problem. Okay. It's yeah. Right. I don't have an exact. Now, most folks it. carry either a GoPro camera or do you have your own camera? We do. We have yeah. the we have the Vision camera. Okay. Yes. Um, so, you know, engineers just love technology. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so, many, technology. so many engineers love to fly, love remote control. What is about remote controlling stuff that's just so... It's like a video game. Yeah. Yeah. In real so, life. In real life. Yeah. You get to control everything. Is, you're playing Call of Duty in real life and you see the the object fly around. Now, years ago, I got one of those AR Parrot uh, okay. helicopters. Yeah. And the first thing my wife says, you could put somebody's eye out with that. 
you have to be a little careful. All right. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend you go full throttle in with our. The house. <laughs> you should you should totally take it slow. You know, it's a tool. It's not. I don't want to say it's a toy. Um, AR drones, fantastic. I love their products as well. And you know, you can actually go full throttle. And it's fine because it's styrofoam. It doesn't oh, hurt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for for our uh, products, it's more of a tool. You can use it for all kinds of professional applications. So you didn't bring one with you, did you? I, I did not. Okay. I was not <laughs> told to bring one with me. <laughs> okay, but sorry. I, that's a yeah. That that would have been good. So if folks want to see this, um, uh, your product, the, the DJI is it yes. the Phantom? Uh, there's the Phantom. There's the S800, S1000, and the new Ronin, which is the handheld gimbal. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Where? What's the website? It's www.dji.com. Oh, that's easy. Dji.com. Yeah, right DJI All right. Check it out. Have a lot of fun. And then there's videos galore on oh, YouTube. Yeah. That oh, Vimeo, YouTube. And we just put up like 10 different ones. So we're constantly updating that. You've seen the Superman video, haven't you? <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that was out of control. Yeah. yeah. Little green screen, some hands out there. Oh, yeah. I know. Mix that with the, with the DJI footage. Yeah, that, w that was awesome. I thanks, for, thanks for stopping by, of Willis. Course. Appreciate of course. you. And I know that you engineers are going to find ways. You're going to find a need. A need. Yes, I need this to inspect towers. Yes. And I have to practice with it for many hours on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good excuse for your wives. <laughs> there you go. Thanks again, Willis. Right, Appreciate you. it very much. All right, you got Take it. care. Relax, Willis. All right, Chris Tobin and I are here at uh, NAB 2014, and uh, we, we got a we got a number of people who are just uh, who are re ready nine. to be interviewed. Who's next? Oh yeah, uh, Frank. Oh no, we had Lucas. Hey, Lucas, come on in. Here, tell you what, I'm going to let you interview Lucas about what's cool and new at, at Innovonics, Okay. Fair enough. All right. Welcome, Lucas. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So you know what we're going to do? You're just going to tell us about Innovonics and the broadcast products and how broadcasters use your stuff. Sure. Then I have a few questions after that. How's Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah, well, uh, Innovonics makes a number of different product lines. We make uh, RDS encoders, uh, RF monitoring, and now internet radio monitoring, uh, and also audio processing. Excellent. Internet radio monitoring. I'm curious. What exactly is the application? I mean, I know what the words say, but sure. I'm a radio station. I have a web uh, stream. What am I monitoring? Why am I doing this? What do I get out of the box? Yeah, good question. Basically, what you're doing is you're monitoring your performance. Okay, you're making sure you don't have audio drops, you don't have uh, data loss, because there are a number of different things that go into a stream. You've got your main encoder, you've also got the content delivery network. It's important to be able to monitor not just one, but both of those ways of delivering the stream. So, uh, so you're monitoring the stream, all the parameters, the metrics. How do I retrieve that information? Do I is there a, lo a web server built in? Do I have an email account that comes out? How do I know? Say it's two o'clock in the morning and the stream is dropping out audio. Do I get alerted? What's what? A absolutely. I guess the question is diagnostics and alarming. What what okay. options are yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've got alarms for audio loss, data loss, uh, and internet loss, and those can be either contact closures, uh, email, SMS, and you can even uh, specify what types of alarms go to different personnel. You can have up to 10 different personnel get alarms, um, and you know the general manager can get the audio alarm, the engineering guy can get the audio alarm and the uh, data alarm, uh, and it also will actually email the monthly uh, weekly and daily logs of all the alarms that happen. So if you're having issues with your content delivery provider or maybe your encoding servers rebooting Sunday morning at 12 and nobody knows, you'll see that history of events and you can then take it and deal with it. Excellent. Now, one more, two more questions. Second, the first question, does the box have a web server built in oh, or a web yeah. browser so you could remote into it? Say it's Sunday morning, I get an email alert that there's a problem. Can I log into the box and look at, say, graphs or other things or query? Absolutely. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, uh, okay. it's got a uh, built-in web server that's a responsive website. So basically, it works on your phone. It works on a you know PC, Scale whatever. It scales, so you can actually just look at your logs. You can see the audio levels. And by the way, the audio levels are measured in dBFS. Streaming levels can be all over the place. And if you use this unit, you can actually look at other folks' stream and see you know how close you are to that level and make sure that you've got really consistent levels. So that's a, that's a, that's a big deal. Yes, it is. And remember, DB full scale is the digital reference for VUs and everything else. So if you're getting uh, DB full scale set up on your equipment, usually minus 20 is actually zero VU in the old days, right. just as a point of reference. Yeah, yeah. That's the SMPTE standard. If you sure. want to do the other standards, there's minus 18 and a few others. We'll, we'll go with SMPTE. Second question is, what's the list price of that box? List price is just under $1,000, $990. Uh, you can fit two in a rack. A lot of folks have more than one stream, and this is a dedicated box, so it stays on your stream no matter what. Even if the power goes out, it'll tune right back to your stream. So, I'm an FM station. I want to monitor my FM signal in a similar vein as my web. 
what's the latest on that front? Well, uh, normally you would uh, do that with a mod monitor, but we also have uh, a brand new rebroadcast receiver. So that's a that's a big product for us at the show, um, and I can certainly tell you a little bit about that if you like. Um, the new rebroadcast receiver that we have is called Aaron, and it's a we're calling it a premium rebroadcast receiver because it's designed for uh, really difficult and you know hard uh, hard case reception scenarios. Um, It'll rebroadcast your signal either in two modes, either composite pass through, where it just takes the whole signal, respits it out, um, or we have stereo regeneration mode. Now, this is good for uh, very low noise output, where it just takes the left and right audio off air and then re stereo encodes it with RDS, uh, with any other um, data that you want to put in there. Um, it's got alarms, audio failover backup that can also uh, default to your web stream, which is really handy. You got both of those going on. Um, also, a nice web GUI interface that will actually let you listen to the output of the receiver. So, if you're a big network station and you've got a central hub and your translators are halfway around the country and something happens, you don't have a way to listen to that. But with this unit, you just log on with your, you know, uh, tablet or whatever onto the web page, and you can listen to the output of the receiver, which is very, very cool. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, I know there's, I know there's a lot more. I've used Innovonics products over the years, so they're really good stuff. So uh, the website is innovonics.com? Absolutely. Excellent. All right, then. I think that does it for now. Great. Lucas, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. My this pleasure. Week in Radio Tech continues yeah. with our next guest stepping up to the booth. Next Actually, the table here at NAB. <laughs> We're going to go through um, the, the radio transmission chain from content to transmission to antennas. Oh, no. And we're going to start with the content. Content? Yeah. You're a content provider? Uh, well, you make well, it possible to content, provide content. Content, content um, mechanism. Oh, facilitator. Listen to you. Yeah. So this is Don Don Backus. Uh, Don's been around, you've been around a while, haven't you? I've been around a while, yes, and I have. used to work at, a, at the Enco company, and now you're over at the BE. Yep. And um, I've got a, I've got a couple of BE automations. They just sit there and chug right along. That's the point. We don't we don't want an exciting automation system. We don't want an exciting uh, transmitter. They should just work. I you know, I, I prefer the phrase play out or, or, or play out delivery system. I agree. I agree. Because uh, automation implies too many things that it's not. Yeah. Um, but it is automation if you want it to be. I it, it it can be, and there's sometimes when it makes absolutely perfect sense to uh, automate. Uh, if you're doing um, a satellite program, um, NPR, if you're doing something that's, you're running a commercial that's delivered at the bottom, or underwriting announcement yeah. delivered at the bottom of the hour, yeah. that's a great place to take people out of the equation and have the machine run it. I'm, I'm going I'm to back out, and would you tell us you know, what's kind of new, what's, what's, what's you know, coming along in automation that folks are interested in? Okay. Well, we've got, um, we're shipping version 1030 of uh, Audio Vault right now, the AV Flex interface, mm -hmm. and we're really excited about that. It's, it's very attractive, a lot of tools under the hood. We had uh, introduced a new app at the um, show this year, the um, AV Flex uh, UI app, and it allows you to control your audio vault from um, an app on an Android or iOS device uh, anywhere in the world. Nice. You can control the the hotkeys, and you and you get feedback, which is really nice when you are playing a cut. I'll pull it up here real quick. Um, oops. And when you when you're playing a cut, you actually get feedback on the playlist. You can see all the cuts that are playing. You can see the uh, the timing. There we, go. there we go. And then we also have hotkeys, the quick start keys right here. So you can control this, this and uh, talking on your phone. And uh, you've got a radio station, not in a box anymore, a radio station in a uh, third of a pack of smokes. Excellent. And for those of the audience that are not here, what's the uh, website for you guys? Uh, www.bdcast, boydavidcast.com. Excellent. And Thank of course, you. We also, also uh, manufacture a full line of uh, transmitters. I just want to point that out. The, uh, That's a STXE, good point. We introduced uh, our new STXE line, uh, which is an exciter with the uh, finest audio specs out there uh, from 60 watts to uh, 500 watts. And in the booth uh, this year, we also got a 40,000 watt uh, FMT transmitter. So we kind of got a pretty wide range in the, in the booth this year from uh, 60 watts to uh, 40,000. Excellent. So with BE, with BE, we can facilitate programming through the automation system yep. and get it to the listener with transmitters. Absolutely. All right. Make sure you go to the website for more information. Right. Thanks, Thanks so Don. Much, guys. You're welcome. Hey. All right. We've got a guy who's been on the show before. He's a good friend of good friend of engineers everywhere. I think you introduced me to FidoNet like oh, 30 forever years ago. ago. And, and CompuServe. That's, we were oh we were gosh. doing CompuServe. Oh Remember goodness. the Broadcast Professionals Forum. Eight nine zero one one seven five. Wow, what a good memory. I'm gonna let you two talk. There have been a ton of buzz about something called a GV. Yep. Tell Chris about it. Okay, so 
when Nautel decided to come out with a new HD radio transmitter, we, we discussed what, what one thing are we going to optimize the transmitter for. And we decided the one thing the industry really needed was efficiency. Mm -hmm. And between all the things we changed, from LD MOS to, to super efficient power supplies to, to, to the, the, the MER algorithm we have called HD Power Boost, to a brand new algorithm that automatically balances things crazy. But it, what it does is it gives us about 15% better efficiency in HD radio. Not often you can see that much of a difference. 15%. We can do, in a 40 kilowatt transmitter, we can do 40 kilowatts of minus 20, and we can do it at 70% efficiency. 70%. And, and we can do at 14, minus 14 injection level, we can do 36 kilowatts at 57% efficiency. Those are pretty crazy numbers. We're talking about a total temperature change from the input air temperature to the output air temperature of 11 degrees C. That's certainly not a 4CX15000, that's for sure. No, no, no more. It, it's, it's been really, really fun. And, and we're delighted. Yesterday, as bad as my feet hurt here, I was floating above the ground because we won two awards for the new GV series and a new award for our, our, our new television series of transmitters. So Excellent. we're just thrilled. We're just thrilled. Excellent. So now those of you that have facilitation systems now need a transmission method to get out there, check out the Nortel site. Right, Nautel.com? Nautel.com. And I will also mention, since we talked about content for a second, that all these transmitters have a little built-in mini automation. So if you actually want to play audio out of the transmitter, there's an automation built in. We play WAV files and MP3 files on the USB jack on the back of the transmitter. Now you see, now that would be for broadcast continuity planning, otherwise known as disaster recovery. Precisely. So think about that. So, they, so you have two different options now, two choices you can go back to your dealers with. Nortel and the other guy we just spoke with. That's right. All right, so I'm just going to be fair and balanced and equal above of everything. Absolutely. Here. Excellent. Great. Chuck, thank you very much. Pleasure. We appreciate it. Show. We'll see you later. Thank yes, you. yes, definitely. Well, Mr. Elvis, please step back to the table. Oh, hello. All right. Uh, so we're going to have uh, the yes. antenna part of this now. Excellent. At least the AM antenna part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom yeah, King, yeah. come on in. This is Tom. Tom's hey. not been on our show before. This is Tom King. No, I was here once before oh, in Australia. Were? Oh, that's oh, that's right. You were yeah. in Australia. Safety that's... show last summer. So everybody who's been in radio <laughs> doing engineering has heard of Kentronic. Yeah. I have bought so many capacitors and a few coils and things from <laughs> Kentronic. And once in a while, I've been lucky enough to work at a station that actually had a real professional cabinet that you guys put together. <laughs> Usually, it's just some lash up in these small markets. But so you guys talk about. We do uh, work in the big markets too, where yeah. they do things right. You got. You, I know you've had some exciting international product projects going on because people yes, are sir. still doing AM and long wave and stuff there and short yes, wave. Sir. So chat about that. We're going to get somebody. You're going to get Frank Foti on next. Okay. All right. Well, first question everybody always asks me when I'm working with AM facilities is how do the antennas get connected to the transmitter? And we always say it's a phaser cabinet. Most facilities I've been in, I'm fortunate to say I've worked with your products, the, the blue cabinet everybody knows. So um, I guess the best thing to do is from your experience with Kentronics and over the years. How, what, was, what would you say is the best practice people should be applying or looking to when they talk to, say, your company or looking to connect their antennas to their transmission facility? Well, I think uh, based on the fact that we're in the midst of a digital transition and the fact that audio bandwidth is what creates market for stations as far as we're concerned, we believe that uh, stations should be looking at their at maximizing their audio bandwidth to have the loudest, best fidelity presence on the air. And there are ways to accomplish that using um, the techniques that we use for HD radio. There's no reason why a station should be thinking about uh, changing their antenna system only when they're thinking about digital. They should be looking at it from the standpoint of even best analog performance because it starts at the base of the tower and it goes to the combined RF power amplifier stage of the transmitter, in, including uh, the phase shift that goes through the final filter network of the transmitter. All that has to be included in the actual design. And the end result is a much ro more robust sounding station. And that's what I think uh, station owners need to be looking at today. Okay, I totally agree. In two of the facilities I've worked in over the years, uh, we did do the best tuning 
broadbanding of our facility, our antennas. There were directional arrays, so we really had to work on it. And that led us to digital, and we found out by being, being proactive and making sure the analog audio was broadbanded, everything was in place, our digital conversion costs were actually about 30% less. Yeah. So what you're saying makes total sense. So if you want to have an AM station that really performs, makes money for yourself, do everything else, broadband the audio, make it possible for people to really hear you, fill the band within that radio because you've got AM man-made noise you got to work over. And then when you decide to go digital for more improvements, the product cost will be much less, most likely. That is correct. Excellent. All right. Well, Tom, I appreciate it. Kintronics.com, is that right? Is that the right site? Kintronic. Kintronic. www.kintronic.com. Excellent. That was Tom King. Yes. We're... Uh, we're just also I would encourage stations if they're sitting on valuable property to start thinking about selling their property and moving and we have all the tools to allow them to do that. Even better. All right, Kentronic dot com. Thanks. Can't thanks again, Tom. All Frank right. Chris. Well, what we are we changing Frank, around here? Yeah, we got Frank Foti next. Frank I'll, Foti. I'll, uh, you'll I'll you'll take this one? You. Yeah, I'll take this one if you don't care. That'd be all right. That's all right. He's your boss. <laughs> He's my boss. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you're watching This Week in Radio Tech, episode number 208. We are live, at least if you're watching it live, we're live at the NAB 2014 show at the Las Vegas Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's bring in Frank Foti. Il Padrino, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Kirk, I have to say this Bozzini business. I know it's the tag all the time. I'm drinking more iced tea than he used to. <laughs> I could never control myself. Kurt, where'd you get this jacket? I mean, does it say Porter Wagner on the back? No, I, I, there was a, there was a guy behind the Stratosphere Hotel, and I had some, had some girls around him. When I showed up, the, the girls scattered, and I liked the suit, but he st started running. I tagged him after, you know, three blocks later, I knocked him down and got the suit. You know what, folks? He's been here all week. I hope you had the bistro <laughs> or the, you know, the, the, the prime rib somewhere. Frank, this, uh, you you have a position at, uh, at at Telos now. You've been in it for a couple of years as CEO, so we're all uh, you know we're we're, we're getting some, you know excellent guidance and uh, uh, you've 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 taken the course of the Telos Alliance and and uh, given us a, a business plan, an attitude, a, a purpose that is uh, I think really agreeable. It's a great a great environment to work in, uh, but it's also a great business environment. And when our business is good, it's always good for our, our customers, and maybe vice versa. What we do good for the customers is is good for our business environment. Well, I mean, Kirk, you hope it that, you know, it, um, it's that way. And uh, um, it might have taken me a couple of years, but I think we've got ourselves in a good place. Uh, we've got a great staff. Um, you know, the um, one of the things that, that I made, a, let's say, a promise to myself was to carry the culture of Telos going forward based on or, or try to keep it the same at, um, um, that it's always been. You know, this year is the 30th year that Telos has been at the NAB. Oh, my goodness. You know, 1985, Steve Church showed the uh, Telos 10, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, here. And back at that time, he was building them by hand. And, um, you know, back then, Telos was Steve. And a few years later, it was Steve and I and about 10 other people. And now we're, you know, you know we got this huge exhibit here and all, all that other kind of stuff. But to the point that you ask, um, we've... We were able to identify a number of people in the company, you, you know, like yourself, that wanted to um, basically be given some rope, if you will, and run with it. And you have, and you know, people like Marty Sachs has with Axia, and you know, we've seen some great stuff with Cornelius as he's helped me, you know, uh, carry a lot of things um, um, with Omnia. And now Denny Sanders has been able to be involved in that area. Uh, we've got, you know, um, a major home run hitter and Tim Carroll and the gang at Linear Acoustic. You know, anything, anything short of, what, five technical Emmy Awards. Um, you know, and there's going to be some exciting things with regard to 25-7 uh, here in the, in the not-too-distant future. Um, but deeper within the company, we've been able to um, identify some people that have stepped up and are, are doing some great things. Our chief operating officer, Scott Stiefel, who actually has come back to the company. Scott came... Uh, began working with us, uh, what, 20 years ago, and, uh, you know, as an engineer, and then he went away and came back as, he's now our chief operating officer. So uh, we're very fortunate, a lot of great things going on. We've had an exciting week out here in Las Vegas, and, you know, some even more exciting things yet to come. Let me ask you a question about the industry as a whole, so in, instead of just the TELUS Alliance, but uh, you know, we seem to have our, our finger on the pulse here. What are you seeing in the, in the radio, and now even the television industry, 
are we coming out of a slump? Does it feel like uh, uh, people are, are building studios and moving forward like they've been uh, holding off in the last few years? Well, does it feel like there's some people that are. Um, but one of the things that we were always able to do was um, um, we did some of our best growth during the downturn. And that's because we retrenched and we saw to it that during recessions we had major projects going on, you know, during one May, uh, during one of the recessions, I think uh, the original Omni was in development. During the next recession, Axie was in, uh, in, in development, such that when the recession ended, we were there with, you know, um, with new... Uh, Ready product? Right. Yeah. You know, in the case of um, Axia, that was disruptive technology. You know, I mean, the birth of audio over IP came from Telos uh, or the Telos Alliance. So um, to answer your question, I, you know, I, I keep my ear on the pulse. Um, but I do believe that independent of where the bu the business landscape might be, you can make things or break things on your own. And we've been able to grow our business and our company Even during tough time. times. Is but things, things do seem to be a little bit, you know, there, there seems to be a little bit less turbulence in the air right now. Gotcha. People are accepting whatever the new now is, seems to be people are accepting it and moving ahead with it. Yep. That, Sure does. Frank, thank you for your time, man. Thank I really you, appreciate it. Good, Good to see luck. you. We're also talking to Leif and Vincent about some audio processing. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, uh, this year uh, Omni has been uh, quite busy. Um, you know, I'm sure Leif's got some interesting things to talk about with the Omni 9. Uh, Omni 11's had some new interesting things. We've got three, uh, let's see, there's um, uh, an Omni MPX tool, an Omni 7 audio processor, an Omni Voco, which is a voice processor. And we even have an Omnia 9 XE streaming processor. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the, um, so the um, munchkins in Omnia land have been rather busy. I want to follow up on one thing you said. Do we have a mod monitor now? That we do. Oh, that is so cool. What's it called? It's called uh, MPX Tool. MPX Tool. It hasn't been available in software for people to run on their own, but now right. it's a, a, a real box. It's a real box. And um, well, we see a lot of... Um, um, functionality from that box. One of the things that has been uh, brought to our attention here at this show, and I guess it came up at the NRSC meeting the other day, was there's a, a fairly large concern about time alignment, ah. you know, an FM between the uh, analog channel and the digital channel. And quite honestly, it's something I've been wanting to see get, you know, uh, standardized for quite a while so we can make it automatic. Ah. So um, I'd say about this time next year, we will probably have that problem licked. Cool. Time alignment, and that's important too. Thanks Thank again, you, Frank. Good sure luck. Appreciate you. All right. You're watching This Week in Radio Tech uh, on the uh, GFQ Network, and uh, we got next, I want to bring in a couple of uh, engineers who are here. Shane and Andrea, can you both come in? Come in. Hey, hey uh, and we're, uh, I know Leif had to run off. Yeah. We're going to get Leif and, uh, and Vincent as soon as we, uh, as soon okay. as we can. And Greg Shea is going to join us too about AES 67. Excellent. All right, we got a couple of whose folks who <laughs> are really in the trenches. I mean, I get, you're on Facebook taking pictures from towers, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm part of the, uh, I take pictures of transmitter sites group on oh, Facebook. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, it gets to be an adventure sometimes, going out to some of these mountains. I, mean, I, I really said it too quickly. Shane Tobin, Director of Engineering at Wyoming Public Radio, and Andrea Tobin. Howdy. And what are you doing? Supporting him? Doing your own stuff? A little bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that I, I think I can count on one hand the number of couples uh, in broadcast engineering that I know. I mean, it's it's a rare commodity, and I'm really uh, pleased, uh, you know. You know, I've thought about making, see if my wife would be my partner when I do engineering, because she's a nurse, uh, and that might be, that, that actually that might be well. important. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had to bandage him up? Uh, no, no, he's he's been smart enough. To <laughs> yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. I've drawn blood at transmitter sites, but usually, you know, nothing, uh, nothing critical. <laughs> so I noticed both of you, and and if I put my bag on, badge on, I am APRE. Yes, you were highly involved with APRE. That stands for the Association of Public Radio Engineers, and they always meet a little bit before an right. Every year we put on the Public Radio Engineering Conference, which is the Thursday and Friday just prior to NAB. Uh, so if you're in public radio or uh, if you're interested in what the public radio community is doing, it's a great place to be. And uh, we have all yeah, sorts of vendors yeah, uh, who exactly. will come and uh, speak, and uh, it's a great time. And you really had a packed house. I mean, we, we did. We had uh, we must have had about 80, 80 engineers uh, attend this year. I mean, By the way, if you're speaking to them, it looks like 800. <laughs> it's scary. 
Yeah, Kirk, you act, you actually joined us this year. That yeah. was that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you for yeah. inviting me. We had a panel about AES sixty seven. Yes, yes. Uh, what does that mean for interconnecting uh, all these digital AOI pieces? Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's it's not a you know a total solution, but at least people can talk a common language. You know, I mean, you still lose a little bit of the custom functionality, but at least you're talking to each other. So, so uh, engineers in the public. Uh, radio realm mm -hmm. uh, if they're not already uh, an APRE member or interested what what should where should they go to check it out go to the website at apre.us uh, there's uh, information about uh, how to join with the Association of Public Radio Engineers and information about the Public Radio Engineering Conference that we hold every year. In fact, for members of APRE, I just posted all the content, uh, content from last year's conference, and I plan to post the content from this year's conference yeah. as well as soon as it's I owe here. you a PowerPoint. I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> okay. Andrea, so what, yes, what have you two seen here at the show that, you're, that you're, you go home, you, you go back to your room, and you're talking about? What's, what's interesting? Oh, everything. Um, Show floor gets a little bit overwhelming yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's you know you like you need blinders or something. Um, I don't know what has popped out to you. Well, what do you think of the uh, the new stuff over at the Nautel booth? Oh yeah, the J the GV. You know, we're looking at possibly looking at those yeah. to put it in a couple sites. And that's a transmitter with extra. New, new oh transmitter oh, line. more more efficient. Uh, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, much, much, much more efficient. Yeah, I think yeah. you get more RF out than the AC that goes in. It's yeah. just, it's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, soon your power company will be paying you to install one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, there's an idea. Pick up all the RF from your other stations and there you go. put that back into the AC. In the there AC you system. Go. There, there you, you go. go. And get higher ratings for yourself because you'll lower everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do that. Yeah, no. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us, Shane thanks, and Kirk. Andrea. Oh, Andrea, what is, you got a, you, she got a badge oh, here, yeah, says, yeah. Smiling Dog Systems. All right, what's that about? Um, s s the badge or the? Smiling Dog. Smiling, smiling Dog Systems is our contracting yeah, company. So, oh, so you're not busy enough being the director of engineering for Wyoming you know, Public I, Radio. I spend most of my time doing that, and she goes out into the field or Can spends time in the shop uh, doing work uh, just Various engineering things, electronic. We actually we actually sell component electronics uh, online, and low, that's low parts kits on Amazon right now, and looking towards expanding so that. If, if I want a one n nine one four diode, and they don't have it at Radio Shack, I can get one from you. Oh yeah, yes. and Woo. yeah, <laughs> and probably and probably more probably esoteric. Probably a lot of other things. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little hard. I've had a hard time finding fifty five thirty two ICs lately. Yeah, yeah so I've got them. All yeah. right, good deal. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us, man. I Thanks, appreciate Kate. it. All right, take care. Shane and Andrea Tobin, hey. husband-wife team from Wyoming. And let's see, we're going to bring in Leif Clayson real quick right now. Hey, Leif, come on in. Hi, Kirk. How are you doing? Ah, you are a popular figure on the internet. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank so, you, likewise. Uh, Leif is the designer of, a, a, what? Uh, uh, well, quite a few things well, by yeah, now. Yeah. Um, but uh, radio-wise, there's Omnia 9, Omnia 9 XE, and MPX tool. Previous things, uh, Breakaway, Octomax, Volume Logic, kind of a long list of things by now. And then there's the Aero Max and Aero Air and Aero 1000, Aero 2000 from Linear Acoustic on the TV side. I'm, I'm running a little short on time here, so if you had to pick one thing that people are asking you about and you're Omnia talking Omnia 9. About Omnia 9. And, and what are they What are they liking? What's the technology in there that's attractive well, to people? Uh, the big one, I would say, is undo, because it's something to finally put an end to the loudness wars, or rather make loudness wars, wars livable. Yeah. I guess loudness wars are a fact of life by now, where, um, where it even makes a recording like Metallica's Death Magnetic from 2008. Which I've, is, I've heard this comparison. Yeah. I, I know. I mean, it's been crowned as the winner of the loudness wars. You, you'd <laughs> think that uh, you think everyone else would have put their weapons down already, right? But at least it makes it it now makes it sound tolerable. Removes most of the distortion. Add some dynamics back in and make it rock the way it should. So, so you're you're fixing the the content that stations are having to use. In, and then processing it the way they want. Indeed, okay. uh, because if you're playing anything made after about the year 2000, um, then it's going to be compressed and overly clipped and distorted already on the CD. That's why I don't like this newfangled music. I like my old music from the 80s. <laughs> exactly, you and me both. I got in, but you can only listen, listen to Steely Dan so many times before you, before you need some new music as well. Although that is a great example of music that sounds acoustic, I mean, sounds good. It's well, not overpriced. Well, they're, they're well recorded. I mean, and, and it's, it's kind of scary when you think about the, the fact that their recordings are all from the 70s. And, they're, and they sound freaking excellent. Yes. And then you compare it to something today where it seems that 
the better technology gets, the worse the music, the worse the quality of music. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> what's what's with that? <laughs> so if people want to find out more about uh, your technology and the Omnia Nine and the uh, MPX tool and other things. Where the, I guess they go to the starting point would be omniaaudio.com <laughs> forward slash nine if you like. Forward slash good deal. Life, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Kurt. Appreciate it. We'll do another whole show with you explaining more about Undo and, and, and that technology. Okay. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be great. That'd be great. All right. All right, man. Take care. Thanks, All right. Man. See you. You're watching This Week in Radio Tech, uh, show number 208, live from the NAB 2014. I'm Kirk Harnack, along with Chris Tobin. Hey, Chris. Hello. Is anybody interesting to talk to? Yes. I got Greg Shea. We can come over. Okay. All right. Greg, come Greg on in. Talk was AES 67? Yeah, AES 67 is what we're going to talk, talk about. Do you want to chat with him about it? Sure. Okay. okay. Here, I'll give you the mic. You, you need a headphone? I'm I'm good. Oh, you're good. Okay. You're good. Okay. <laughs> good to see you again. How you doing? Greg and I had the opportunity to sit on a panel recently. Well, recently, back at AES in New York City. Mm -hmm. So you're still you're still working with the AES 67, right? Right. So give well, us a little synopsis of that. Sure. Um, as you may know, the uh, uh, standard was published in September, mm -hmm. and um, one of the big questions was how well it was going to be adopted and accepted by all the major manufacturers. And it's been very encouraging that all of the major implementers of audio over IP, ourselves, Ravenna, um, ourselves, of course, uh, our system being library, right. Uh, Dante, Wheatstone, you know, all the major players uh, have announced support for it. So that's like the first hurdle. So now the second hurdle, and what we're looking forward to is the, the first uh, plug fest, when we're gonna have all the manufacturers get together and uh, everybody try to talk to everybody else and we'll find out. Um, uh, it's a little bit of keeping each other honest and uh, a little bit of just discovering, you know, oh, we didn't realize this. And plug fests are uh, done by a lot of manufacturers for other products as well, audio codecs, transmitters and stuff, just to get an idea when you're doing interoperability, not just independently. So AES 67, so everyone knows, is the approach or the uh, the attempt to make IP devices in the, uh, I guess, IP networking of consoles and stuff um, compatible or interoperable. So if I have a live wire device and I want to talk to a WheatNet device, the hope is AES 67 would allow us somehow to cross that bridge. Use it. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure there's a lot of people always ask me, what is AES 67? So I just want to make sure we have that. Well, I was going to say, one way to look at it is... Um, AES 67 was not inventing something new, something different. Um, essentially, a lot of the audio over IP systems are very similar, just some of these minor differences. So what AES 67 ended up being is basically restrict all these other options. Let's all pick this basic set um, and everybody do this one particular set. And in our case, we had to add a couple, you know, a detail or two. And if everybody does the, the same meet in the middle, um, then we'll all be able to talk to each other. So you can almost say it's sort of like the MIDI protocol that people, the musicians use. Yeah, Similar, because I use MIDI for some newsroom yeah. applications. Actually, it was kind of wild what we did with it, but because of those that set of parameters, we were able yeah. to actually use it with the newsroom um, automation system. And people are like, you're using a MIDI controller to do this stuff with your automation. Yes. Wow. So th I guess the AES 67 could be considered the same thing. Yeah. This is cool. So th when, when's the plug fest take place in the, the spring? Um, Fall. We're um, planning on uh, August, uh, basically after IBC. Um, it looks like it may be sponsored by Swedish Radio. Um, and again, we consider this to be really important because here are the major customers. Um, of course, you know how standards are. Uh, customers love them. Vendors sometimes are not so sure. So if you have the major customers standing up and saying, look, this is important, and you know we are saying it's important and in fact uh, you know if customers begin to say things like we're not going to buy it unless it's AES 67 that gives the pull through you have to pull the standards through so uh, oh, cool. by IBC I think is September okay so it's, Maybe it's before, before. The date isn't set yet. oh okay the, um, at the AES in Berlin coming up in two weeks um, is the planning wow. committee for the plug fest so in other case it's happening this year most likely in the later half of the year. That's great. All right. Well, thank you very much, Greg. Very good. Appreciate it. And it's Greg Shea. He's the chief chief science officer with Telos. Just so you know. Thank if you, you have any questions for him, email him, and then um, well, that's it. That's all I can say. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Sure. All right, Kirk. What hey, do we have coming up? Oh, well, look at this. Barry we, we've never had Barry on the show before. Excellent. And sometime I want to have Barry on for the whole show. Absolutely. So um, tell you what, would you you want to talk to Barry? Uh, sure, I can. Uh, okay. All right. Good. Come on in, Barry. Step Barry Michigan. Barry Michigan uh -oh. and Barry actually, because Barry was very encouraging to me to even start doing this podcast, 
I kind of gave him a little freebie uh, sponsorship from the BDR. Right. Yeah. Broadcaster's desktop resource. Absolutely. And so let's uh, you talk about that and what Barry's seen at the show that's pretty cool. And sure. thank you, Barry, for your encouragement <laughs> when you get the podcast going. I appreciate that. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Barry. All right. First thing we'll start with is Broadcaster's desktop reference. Give us a little synopsis. Started. What, what was the uh, you know motivation behind it and what people can expect from it when they go to it? Okay. It's Broadcaster's desktop resource. It's yes. the www.thebdr.net. And it, it was an outgrowth of what I did at Radio Guide for eight years, uh, trying to get the information people need to do the job, get it in a simple, direct, straightforward way. And we've really seemed to make most people like it the way it is. Uh, we're up to about 7,000 unique visitors a month, Excellent. which is a whole lot of eyeballs. And uh, as I walk the floor, a lot of folks say, hi, how are you? Love to read the newsletter every week, love to see the site and the companies. Uh, the manufacturers, the vendors have really been great at sponsoring the site and keeping all the expenses paid. It, it, it's a great site. I've used it on many occasions. I've refer, referred it to other folks. So yeah, you've done an excellent job and the support you're getting is, 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 is phenomenal. So let's move on to where we are right now, which is NAB Las Vegas 2014. What have you seen at the show that would say, I know everybody says, what have you seen new? What, what, what stands out? I've been finding out, noticing a lot of things that don't stand out of the, the old staples of the industry have just got a new face, but now more efficient. You know, we had Chuck on earlier talking about Nortel's ability to increase efficiencies on transmitters. Transmit is nothing new, but right. the efficiency, that's something new. So what have you noticed, if anything, around the, the north, south, and central halls? Okay. Well, what can I say? Tuesday's, Tuesday's my lunch day, so I'm really sort of shy on time on Tuesday. And Monday, everybody's got to pay for the carpet. So I wandered around, had some appointments, and I saw some things ranging from the new Nautel GV, the uh, Rodian Schwartz yes. with the glycol liquid cooling. They've actually sold one. It's being installed in Dallas right now. And uh, then, of course, you've got the other end of things with with the, the BE folks and wherever. I think that... The, the ability, oh, Gates, Gates Air. Gates Air. They're back as Gates. I think the fact that we can put our hands above a transmitter and yeah. barely tell that it's running. Uh, the Nautel or the uh, Rodian Schwartz, for instance, they run silent. You think of all those transmitter rooms where you have to have the earplugs and right, right. try to try to exist and shout over your, your transmitter to give instructions to the guy working with you. Yeah, the one that comes to mind is a uh, FM25K, I think it was. Yes, the Harris. Kaboom. Kaboom. The very loud, yes. <laughs> but you know, you're absolutely right. I did go by one of the tr uh, transmitter manufacturers. I'm like, yep, hand over the top. Wow, those days. I, I, yeah. As Chuck was mentioning, you know, the temperature in, temperature out difference you know, is now 12 degrees. Yeah. I said to myself, wait a minute. I remember the spec used to be anything around 80 degrees was normal. Mm -hmm. now, now it's 12 degrees. I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to think that. Oh, that's just, it's great. Now, a lot of you guys have to have uh, heaters in your transmitter rooms. No. Uh, I don't know. You can't exhaust the heat into the building anymore. That stinks. Well, anyway, well, listen, Barry, it's a real pleasure. We'll definitely have you come back and talk some more and do more in detail. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I enjoyed uh, seeing you and hope, the, uh, hope your little show keeps going. Oh, the show is going well. All right. Yeah, my picture's in the post office. People love it. All right. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Safe travels home. Thank you. You too. All right. Hey. Oh, sound right. four. Yeah, sound four. Now, this is uh, 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 this is Vincent. Vincent, what's your last name? Uh, Vincent de Frottin. De Frottin. De Frottin. Vincent de Frottin. Yes, that's me. <laughs> good, good to see you. Now, Vincent, uh, you are a, you are sound four. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sound. Tell us what. Sound four is fairly new to me. Maybe I've only heard of you for a couple of years. Yeah. So tell us about sound four. Yeah, sound four was established in two thousand and seven. Yeah. And uh, the goal was to do products around PCI Express card and open a new way of, of products. Audio processing or streaming? Yeah, or so we first start with audio processing. Yeah. Then we add extra features around. We do RDS encoder, we do program backup, we do audio IP solution, we do uh, streaming, we do... And also we, are, we propose a very nice voice processing. Mm -hmm. It's now in a box. That's what I want to talk to you about. So you've, you've talked about all these things you can do, but we now have, uh, in a cooperation with Omnia, we have some specific products yeah. incorporating your technology and your hardware surrounded by our box and uh, user interface. 
So tell us about the mic processor. Everyone is asking about yeah, this. Yeah, the mic processor, it's a beautiful system. We can manage up to eight mics. Eight? You know, eight okay. mics. Okay. And cool thing is you can divide resource and create virtual studio. So you, it's very flexible because you can say that I, get, I need four mics in, in one studio and then one mic for voice track. So you create different virtual studio and play around. Good thing also, we share presets because it's a, it's a big ah. challenge when you have 10, 20 studios, do I have the right preset in my boxes? Right, right. So we right. share preset with... So you don't have to go manually put in a preset no, in every yeah. studio. You no. can have, ah, Yes, and if preset. a new guy arrives, you just do the setup and you're sure in each studio you get the presets. Yeah. So that's yes. fine. And also we open a way that's doing recall by day parts. Because, you know, in all, all day parts, guys are sitting at the same place at the same time. So why doing recall each preset so we can save the full configuration and then recall it. And very soon, you know, it will be recalled directly from Axia Mixer. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. So very. And one more product is that you have, uh, we've been working with the Omnia 7 and this, yeah. this has your technology. And Frank's Omnia technology, you know. Yeah, yours and, and Frank's? Yeah. You mean you got down together and had a cup of coffee? Sure. Oh yeah, coffee yeah. and beer. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, yes, because Frank do crazy clipper and, and Frank and I decide to take the best of uh, what we do together. Mm -hmm. And finally, this Omnia 7 is coming. It was really needed because between the 1 and 9 and ah. 11, there are no, no products. So this is the target of this product. But it's not only a, a, an air processor. We provide many functionality around and, and a very affordable price. So it's mm -hmm. a good solution. Let me ask about a little bit of history. Before Sound 4, <laughs> you were involved in another processor that was very popular in France. In Europe. And, in Europe, <laughs> and got, yeah, got some buzz around. What was this processor yeah, called? Yeah, it was IDT. IDT. Yeah. And yes. we do a very big system. We also launched the first FFT processor, you know, in real time. Mm -hmm. So yes, it was a huge success. Yes. And uh, yeah, and now we, one of most of engineers are at Sonfro now. Mm -hmm. So we continue. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Vincent, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you. And now oh, also on the stand with you, who's your, your other, the other person yeah. on your team? Your Camille partner? is the head of, yeah, the head of engineering. Okay. This is a very nice guy, very, he gets crazy idea. And uh, we, together, we do very nice, nice things. It's good to have a partnership with you and, and your company. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, and, and for us too, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you, Kirk. Okay, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Ah, that was great. Uh, who's next? We have oh, Jeff. Jeff. Now serving great. ticket too. <laughs> Tell you what, how about you and Jeff talk? I'm going to sure. go, I'm going to arrange some more. Jeff is the uh, brainchild behind 25-7. I think it's fair to say. And I love that name. What's 25-7? Well, <laughs> think about it. It gives you an extra hour every day. And if we could make a personal version a personal of it, version. I, I, I'd, I'd be too. Be a rich man. I'd be I, the first customer. I pay. I, I pay money yeah. for that too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. All right. Well, welcome, Jeff, to the show. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Just for disclosure, Jeff and I do know each other from prior to this uh, interview right now. So, twenty-five-seven. Explain to the audience, maybe uh, how it started. What you know, sure. what group of crazy people brought everything together? How many years ago? And then how it evolved over the years and where we are today. Well, sure. Well, twenty-five-seven systems. Um, the, the team actually existed before the company, and uh, in some ways, the, creating the company was an excuse to get the band back together. Uh, many of you may have known, known us from the Orban Odyssey. We were the, the guys who made the, the AKG DSC 7000 and then the, uh, the Orban Odyssey digital workstations. Um, and it was such a great team. We've all worked together for so many years. Um, we reformed under. Uh, 25-7 systems when we came out with Audio Time Manager, where we, we were really trying to solve an interesting problem of uh, helping stations better uh, uh, better deal with time on uh, on their live air by using time compression. So we built a real-time time compressor, kind of like a TiVo for radio. Uh, it's a very popular box, and I've got stations that don't know how they did live radio without it. Uh, it's it's kind of all over the the, the country. Uh, and then we, we moved on to, to basically reinvent the profanity delay to take an old dog and give it a bunch of new tricks. Uh, PDM is our, is our top selling unit and uh, the, 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 the killer app in it is a feature we have called PD Alert. When you press the dump button, it captures a before and after audio file snapshot of what was dumped, what went to air, what didn't go to air, instantly emails it to the program director or the general manager or the lawyers or the FCC, if you're 
so uh, a glutton for punishment. I will say that I have worked at a radio station where we did use that box, and we did have two presenters or DJs on the air that, well, unfortunately, they did hit the button, they did everything, and those emails went out, and it was entertaining because I, I was on the list as well as the program director and others. And just to see it work, hear it, going, wow. But what was even more important was the, when the person was brought into the office to discuss what happened, there was no... No, you know, no. There's no he said, she said. Exactly. Right. So it actually keeps you accountable and honest. I will say that. A lot of program directors have told me it's it's a been a quality control tool. Absolutely. Um, and and we've we've had some say that they've cleared up. Uh, yeah, they've right. had sloppy board ops who are covering their covering their behinds by just dumping when they should just be paying attention. Right. Right. And to cover their tracks and and this way there's there's actually no way for them to pull it off the box we didn't give them a delete key to take it off so once it's on there and once it gets mail emailed out you know things things stay on the internet they don't so so there you go so i'm thinking if i'm an engineer for a station maybe what i should be doing is talking to someone like yourself or whomever and say how do i apply this in my radio station then talk to the program director because now what you can do is avoid having them point fingers at well it was engineering's fault console wasn't working, there was a broken button. It's not me, somebody else. I'm only kidding. It's just whatever you want to do with it. But it's a great box, it does work. I've used it, so for full disclosure, it does work very well. We have um, we became part of the TELUS Alliance. I, I should say this too, because we're sort of talking yeah, about the history question. of the company. Now we move fast forward to today. Yeah, uh, we became part of TELUS Alliance last year, January 1st, 2013. Uh, it's been a great marriage, and it was very, I think, sort of visionary of Frank and Tim to to, to bring us in, uh, they wanted the team, and uh, my whole crew is over in, and we're doing some great things behind the scenes. Uh, there's, there's, I hate to, I'm sorry to use the word synergy, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's, you know, cross pollinization. Synergy, branding, and what else? No, no. Branding. There's, there's been a great pollinization, cross pollinization between our engineers and the guys at Natellus, and it, it's been a warm embrace. We're doing some very cool tech um, and now we can start to use some of the piece parts we've developed within 25-7 and put it in, in the, for, for the greater good. Some of our, our delay management really belongs in the Omnia and yeah. we're working on these things right now. Um, there's just so much more we can do. It's, a, it's a, a, an issue of scale and these guys really get it and it's, it's, it's been great. I'm, I'm very happy. So, excellent, excellent. Well, I, a great show. I, I, Oh, here we go. Remiss if I didn't drop the <laughs> f bomb um, on Chris's show. <laughs> the f bomb on twerk. Here we go. So, the physical f bomb. That's yeah, all I'm going to say. Use your imagination to the show. There's going to be hundreds of these flying all over the floor. Excellent, so, Jeff. Thanks a lot. Right, Appreciate. It. We'll see you later. Thanks. All right, Kirk, who do we have lined up next? Hey, we've got... So, Tom, uh, want to come in? Who's no, next? No, Yoast? Yoast, Yoast, yeah. come on in. You know Yoast, right? I know Yoast. Okay. It's good to see you. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, is, is it the case that the camera's not picking up uh, screens here because it's... So it depends on the angle. Depends on the angle. There you go. There we go. Okay. So, this is... Uh, the Lucy app. Th this is going to be called Telos Live. Oh, it's not right. available yet. Of course, Lu Lucy Live's available absolutely today. So, it's the Lucy Engine rebranded as Telos Live. Exactly. And uh, so, this is... This is live MPEG Layer 2 from my office in Nashville. And uh, Really? That's your office? That's the music? That's, yeah, we party 24-7. Uh, now I understand a few things. Yeah. Even uh, connect to Amsterdam, basically. Oh, yeah. Connect to the yeah. red light district, Here, if you like. I'll let you two talk about the technology, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, welcome to the program, Yost. It's good Thank to see you, you again. So, as Kirk pointed out, talk about the technology. Lucy Live's been around a while. I've been playing with them since 2000, I think, four or five. So, talk about it give some people an insight as to where you came from with it, why you did it, and I, I remember the stories you told me, so tell yeah. me others. So I can talk to uh, coming two hours, maybe? Oh no, sorry. But, um, no, can't do two hours. Okay, let's do short version. Short well, version, please. Well, we have our 10th anniversary this year, oh. where we, uh, uh, because we started in 2004, with, uh, at that time, Windows Mobile, pocket PCs, yep. Yep. broadcasters were approaching us um, to ask if we could record MP2 and send it out to the station via FTP. Mm -hmm. So we did that at that time, and then of course the next step would be uh, uh, live, live reporting from the field via the uh, at that time called UMTS yes. 3G, yes. and we started uh, making live applications for uh, Windows Mobile, but after a while also iOS, mm -hmm. BlackBerry, Windows, Mac, mm -hmm. uh, all the platforms we cover now with uh, Lucy Live. 
Excellent. And and I can say from personal experience using Lucy Live on all those platforms, it is probably the most intuitive application you'll ever come across. Uh, I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, it works very well. I've used it in, applica in many places where most people said it's impossible, so I've had fun with it. Also, one of the things that I always like to remind people is if you're going to use your uh, phone, one thing you have to remember, the cell phones or mobile phones these days, the audio interface is not as standard as you'd like it to be. As a result, we come up with some very strange sounds and audio. But uh, Yoast and, and the folks at Lucy have come up with a very nice design. I will say it meets both RFI specifications, proper crosstalk specifications, and it just works. Um, you, it's the Mickey cable, Mickey dash B for black and Mickey white. So if you want white for your phone, depending on your, your needs, it works really well. Okay, Worth so getting. Does some very smart features. The most smart thing is it has line input. Yes, level. line input and level. Microphone input level. And microphone input so level. Basically, you can connect it to a mixer output mm -hmm. to record all. The and I actually have worked with a couple of radio stations recently who we've done that. Yeah. So they have their mixer output. There's a cell phone on the table and a mixer, and the people look at, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "They're doing a live broadcast." What? In the in the black square, if you can see it in this graphic, I'm sure you can. There is electronics, so it's an active device, but the line and mic input is ideal. Oh, by the way, there is a headphone jack for those of you asking to yourself, can I listen to myself and the return audio from the far end? All right here. So with this and a phone, you got yourself a broadcast facility. You're on the air. You're on the air everywhere. Okay. Well, right. Oh, oh, Actually, wait. Yo says one more like thing. To, see, uh, to, to look at this because this is the, the most easiest software to use to. Ah, Lucy for All, yes. Lucy for All. Quite familiar press with that. Button and press the button and you're connected to any uh, customized station you can do. Yep. So at the moment we're uh, streaming live to Maastricht, the Netherlands, mm -hmm. 6,000 6, kilometers away. Mm -hmm. We could just do a live broadcast. Yes. I was so confused. I thought Lucy for All called all radio stations. No, 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 no. This is a great, oh yeah, I've already worked with some people with this. It's, uh, it's cool. It has some great applications. Yeah, yeah. Calls everybody. Yeah, it, it, Lucy for All is the new multicasting device. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, reminds, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, go it's, it's, it reminds me of a movie where uh, someone uh, takes over all the broadcasting stations ah. and says, I'm going to nuke you. Uh oh, oh. There you go. Thermonuclear device. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good to Thank see you again. Much. I'll talk to you later. Chris, I'll, I'll give you a little relief here for a minute. You can, you can uh, go have a cup of tea or uh, finish that margarita. <laughs> oh, you might run. Yeah. Come on in here. We're going to, by the way, you're watching uh, This Week in Radio Tech, episode 208, live from the NAB Show 2014. Glad you're here. And with me is a fellow that I've, I, I, I guess I knew your software before I knew you. Uh, yeah, a this, number of years. This is Stu, Stu Buck with a company with the crazy name Arctic Palm. Arctic Palm, and you're in Canada. Yes. Oh, God. I mean, you guys had to scratch. What, were you drunk? Uh, no, <laughs> but Canada gets a little cold, so uh, we had the Arctic side. But we also had on office in Florida, which oh, has the phone side. Now <laughs> it makes sense. Well, your software right now, one of your pieces of software is running at my stations in American Samoa. Yes. And it's it's taking um, metadata from our automation systems plus commercial advertising matter and yes. PSAs and putting it all in text form mm -hmm. to put on the RDS. We can do the RDS. We can do your website. We can do HD. We can do Twitter. We can do Facebook. We, we, you can push this metadata to all those different All places. those different places. Oh, okay. Good and deal. we've, uh, with our latest release, two new little goodies in there with HD. We're doing the artist experience. Oh, yeah. So you now see pictures on radio, and we're not calling it television. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the big advantages or, or things that we've seen over the last few years, people wanting to monetize yeah. their RDS. Yes. And working with companies like Innovonics and ourselves, we now have a process where we will take your metadata, your commercial advertisers message, put it in all of those places, mm -hmm. and on the RDS side, we'll pull it back in through an FM uh, for the Innovonics 633, yep. which allows us to verify back to the client that his metadata actually was broadcast wow. on the air. Good, and that, that now allows and, you. To, and people paying want verification. Yeah, absolutely. Now uh, you they also they won't take our word for it. <laughs> we, we've only got another minute. Tell me, you make a software product that works with a phone system yes, we that, do. that Telos makes. Uh, that we do. What does it do? Uh, it's basically your call screening. Okay. You can screen all your calls. Your producer can take care of getting your calls lined up, sequencing them, uh, communicating back and forth with the, with the host. But it also links into our data casting. So your caller information can be going on the RDS, the displays, 
Uh, it also links in with our contesting package. So a simple click, and we now have all your contest winner information right ready for your receptionist to pick it up. So the station can sound on the air like it knows what it's doing. That's the intent. That's the problem <laughs> with our stations. We don't always sound. Well, maybe we should get that for the show. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would help out. But the, yeah, we just released the version for the VX, and, and thanks to some fine people that tell us, we managed to get a, a VX unit in a office, and uh, we get to play with it a lot. So RDS, uh, and then you know, push this metadata out to lots of places, yes. phone screening, mm -hmm. and uh, what, what's, what's one more popular product that you make? Uh, contesting. Oh, the contesting, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, basically with contesting, three kind of key parts to it. One for the uh, promotion department. They can schedule what contest, when they're going to run, and what prizes they're going to give away. Making sure that the on-air staff don't give away things that they're not supposed to. For the on-air staff, a very simple module to capture the listener information. Click the button, pops it out to reception. You come in, an electronic signature, take your prize. You know, you at one station, I gave away the manager's car. And yeah, I probably wasn't, that. Yeah, wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah, and how long did you work there? Not <laughs> counting tomorrow. <laughs> the website would be? ArcticPalm.com. Okay. Stu Buck, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good to you see you. Good day. to see you. All right, so this week in Radio Tech Live from NAB 2014. In our final minutes here, we got a couple more. We, Tom, did you, did you find your son? Here, here we go. Come on in here. He's coming on in. Tom McGinley right. with CBS and C Come on closer here. All right. Come on, come on. Jim, Jeff, come on come up closer. On in, come on, come on. All, All right. right. Good deal. All here right. we are. So, Tom, I've known you forever. Forever. Wow. Back probably early 80s. But, yeah. Let's not measure it. Let's measure it in years, not wives. Okay. Well, well for you, bud. <laughs> I've been married to the That's same right. woman for 42 Good. years. Now, so there you go. Jeff McGinley is on our crack support team. Yes. Here at uh, at the Telos Alliance. Yes, I am. And somehow you two are related. Somehow. Yes. Anybody care to to cross well, that bridge? There's a there's a female that's common in our lives. <laughs> really? Indeed. And she's the angel of my life, by the way. This would be your bride. That would be my bride and, and his the mother mom. of my child. All right. Yes. Fa father, son, you couldn't keep him out of engineering? I couldn't. Radio? I tried to. Uh, she told me that if I got him involved in radio, she would kill me, and then she would divorce me. In that order. In that order. <laughs> but I, I managed to get him started actually in computers first. You're faster than she is. But he found his way into radio nonetheless. Uh, I couldn't prevent uh, it. It's, it's, it's kind of uh, contagious, and it's a disease, and once you get it, you don't get rid of it. Tom, you've, kinda, you, you've been at a lot of booths here, and you talk to a lot of people. Is there a technology that people should be paying attention to? Is there something up and coming and rising? Is there a new and better way to do something we already do that's interesting to you? Well, it's probably called AOIP. Oh. Isn't that the new thing on the block? Uh, I guess I'm yes, five years too late. It's 14 oh, well. years old now. Oh, but 14. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. No, you know, uh, here on the floor what I've found is that it's mostly existing products with enhancements that are out there. Uh, I, there's not too many brand new gee whiz uh, wow technologies that have broken through for the first time out here. One item I did kind of take an eye on is uh, the all uh, liquid cooled FM transmitter by Rodian and Schwartz. That's, interesting. That's kind of a breakthrough. We yeah. haven't seen that before. What kind of liquid? Is it uh, alcohol? I guess it's a glycol based oh, well, thing or okay. something like that. It doesn't you taste know. nearly as good. Not as good, no, exactly. But uh, beyond that, it's mostly enhancements and there's a lot of good stuff out here, no question. So, uh, of course, in, in our booth, we're talking a lot about voice over IP for, for telephony, getting out off the POTS lines, which are getting right. expensive, and getting off the ISDN and the T1s. So moving into voice over IP. Do you know something about that, Jim? Absolutely. Kept me very busy last year, was yeah. running around the, uh, the country installing VX systems. So the, the VX, the VoIP SIP enabled hybrid that we have is just amazing. Tom, you have an interesting mix in your life of adopting new technologies and yet being prudent and careful at the same time. That's right. How, what advice do you have for engineers who are, who are maybe scared of newer technology, don't want to learn about it, or what should they jump in, into? How do you measure that? Well, I am the proverbial doubting Thomas. I let, <laughs> I let the other folks uh, be the cutting edge, bleeding edge first adopters, typically. And I let a technology kind of season itself before I eat it and pay for it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, you've, you've got to be judicious on that. And uh, there's a lot of still legacy technology out there that works really, really well. Yeah, yeah. And there's no sense leaving it behind if it's doing the job for you. Uh, if, if, if you're being left behind in any aspect of technology, then you've got to look around and say, hey, what are these guys using that, that are leaping ahead of me? And then that's when you want to justify to your ownership. I got to spend some money and get updated here. Um, but you got to keep your eyes open all the time because it's move, moving very, very fast. Some technologies offer the promise of saving a lot of money. 
And when when do you well like like voice over IP? I mean, uh, I have a, a friend in Nashville who could save literally eight hundred dollars a month on nine phone lines by going from POTS to voice over IP. But he's 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 wary. He's wary. VOIP when it first started was a little shaky. I think oh, yeah. everybody has to recognize that. And I have waited myself to upgrade my own PBX at my own stations in Seattle. We're going to do it probably right. later this year. But that's a big investment. You can't just it change is. it because the technology changed on a dime. I'm going to save money by doing it. Okay. You know, and it's stable enough now in my mind that there's no reason to wait any longer. Absolutely. Jeff, will you be there to help him along the way? Absolutely. Yes, I will. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. It's great talking to you guys. I appreciate it. A wonderful we're, show. We're about out of time. You've got a great program here, Ta my friend. <laughs> well, thank you. And by the way, you uh -huh. are a great American. Oh, thank you. Exactly. I, I hope you'll come and be on the show for an hour sometime. Invite just, me. I'll just, be there anytime. Okay. All right. Take care, guys. This Week in Radio Tech, I'm Kirk Harnack. We have at least one more guest. We may have time for another couple more. Come on in, Jason. I want to introduce you to an engineer. This is a show about, ostensibly about engineering. This is Jason Wisniewski. Hi, Jason. Hi, Kirk. Uh, Jason uh, works at the TELUS Alliance, and you're the guy behind a lot of the code for the products that we almost take for granted nowadays. A lot of code, a lot of uh, hybrids, a lot of codecs, a lot of years. So um, one of the things that, that Jason and I enjoy talking about, because he often has to correct me about my expectations uh, in, in a new feature, when you add, you know, when you add a new feature to a product, uh, I don't know, let's, what would be a good example? Um, um, let's, uh, slip my mind. Okay, we added, we added Aptex, A-P-T-X, yep. to the Zip1. Yes. Now, this isn't a matter of just taking some code from the guys at CSR no. who own Aptex and plugging it in somewhere. No. There's more integration that's yes. needed. Yes, more integration, more testing, more inner testing, and uh, yeah, everything you add gets uh, exponentially more complicated. Why, why exponentially? What happens when you add a feature to an existing set of software? What do you got to think about? Well, you have to think about how it interacts with everything that you've added before it. So every time you test, if you have one thing, you just have to test that. If you have two things, you have to test that and the other thing together. You add three, and you have to do one and two, one and three. Wait, is, is this like every every bit you add to a to a, 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 a crypto key doubles, doubles everything? Exactly. Oh, it's okay. That's and not all features there. interact like that, but most of them do, and most of them do in ways that you wouldn't expect. So if we add Aptex, which we did, uh, a few months ago, yes. it's available now. If we add Aptex, we have to test it uh, whether we're calling uh, TSCP through the server or an RTP call or an, RTP. Or, or an, an ASIP call. Does it recover well? Does it recover well from errors? Does it work with all these other codecs that we hadn't uh, tested against before because we didn't have the Aptex before? Gotcha. Wow. One question that, that uh, comes up a lot is people want interconnectivity between IP codec brands. Mm -hmm. So they have a Zip1, they want to talk to a Suprema IP. Sure. or um, uh, maybe a, a Maya, or even a barracks box. So, and, and in the mind of the user, and in my mind also for years was the idea, well, if they both do MPEG layer two, what's the problem? Well, what is the problem? Why, why don't two things have MPEG layer two and they still don't work together? What else is there to consider? Not only are there different header types on layer two, because layer two is not a complete description of the codec, but there is also RTP format, differences, there's different interpretations of the standards on which these things are based, uh, because as standard as they might be, they're still written in English, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and English speakers sometimes have a hard time parsing what is meant. Yeah, sure, sure, and sometimes, you know, what what is implemented popularly might not be by the letter of the uh, spec or, or by your interpretation, so you have to go back and try I've, again. I've noticed that sometimes, this has caught Telos off guard a few times, mm -hmm. and other manufacturers too, when they're ahead of us, but an early adopter sometimes gets to do things his own way. Yes. Oh, well, let me interpret it this way, and we do it this way, but then, then time goes by, and other manufacturers settle on a different way to do the same standard, yes. and, those, and then they're not compatible. Yes. Yeah, exactly. A little frustrating. Yeah. But it's going to happen. But, yeah, and, and we do the hard work. That's, that's, uh, that's our business. You know how you fix that? If you're a consumer of these products, complain <laughs> and wait. Complain and wait. Complain and wait. Yeah, and, and yeah. I mean, well, first of all, we, we can't fix things we don't know about, sure. and we can't test absolutely everything, although we try. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, can, we can usually fix something quickly, but we're not going to release it before it's tested and tested and tested. Yeah. So that's where the time comes from. Um, let's talk one more question. Let's talk about the Zip One. This is uh, our Zephyr IP, our Zip One mm -hmm. uh, codec. It operates very, very automatically and nicely yes. with other Zip Ones, but yes. it's compatible 
in some ways with a variety of other IP codecs. Yes, indeed. Um, what is what's what's the magic that's in the in a Zip One? What what do people go? Ooh, ah, that's pretty cool. What when it's Zip One to Zip One? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Well, it, it, it's nice that we have the automatic buffer control and the automatic bitrate control when mm -hmm. it's on a fully Zip One call, so that you don't have to specifically dial in and know today what connect what your connections like. You, it's it's pretty much taken care of. Um, you've got the error concealment for when it does fall down a little bit, you won't even hear it. Um, it with the directory server assist, it can oh, find yeah. your zip one no matter where it's at. So you don't have to know the IP address of another zip one. You just give it a friendly name, like a contact in your phone book. Yep. Uh, and it's it's a familiar experience. So a voiceover artist at home with a dynamic IP address from yep. AT&T or Comcast or, or Cox, that doesn't matter if, no. if you're using our zip server, which is free, to make correct. a call. Correct. Okay. Yes, correct. And it's it's like the cell phone model. How many of the phone numbers in your phone do you actually know anymore? Good point. You just pull their name up. Yeah, good point. Jason, we're out of time, but thanks for talking with us. Glad sure appreciate here. it. Jason W. from our Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati our Cleveland office <laughs> at, uh, at, at, at Telos. Let's see, we got Mike Erickson's going to come in real, real quick. Mike, come on in. How you doing, man? How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Mike is an audio processing expert from uh, the friendly folks over at Wheatstone. You deal with the Vorsis processor. That's correct. A few months ago, we talked to Jay Tyler for a few minutes. He was down mm -hmm. in Sydney, Australia. That's right. Chat chatted with us on our show, and glad you could come by today. Thank you. Tell us what your customers are uh, asking you about and talking about. Well, to a man, uh, every or to a person, I should say, to be correct here, everyone who's coming to the booth has actually asked about the uh, the AES oh, the AC, the AES sorry. composite. Whoops, sorry oh, about the that. The AES sixty. Oh, the composite. The, the composite. composite. Yes, the AES. AES composite, um, and that's been a big thing. And it's now, for those of us not quite up to speed. Tell me what that means. AES composite over uh, what digital IP? Or that, well, we have uh, we're able to send a, a composite AES signal over the um, out the AES pipe into the modulator or the transmitter. Oh, okay, okay. So basically, what you're doing is you're eliminating the conversion back to analog from a digital processor, and then back to digital once you get a digital exciter. Now. People sometimes get confused. They think that this has something to do with HD. This is not. This is for analog, traditional FM broadcasting. Right. It's the last link in yeah. the in the circle of uh, being able to have a complete digital chain from the source to the transmitter. In the past, what you've what you've had to do is if you came out and you wanted to keep it digital, you had to come out the left right AES, right. and you lost a composite clipper, and you had to deal with the stereo generator and the exciter, and you just spend a whole bunch of money on a brand new processor, and you couldn't use the stereo generator if you wanted a digital pad. This is a bit analogous to some stations, in, think about in the past when you only had analog options. You could shoot with your STL a composite signal to the transmitter side, having your, your processor at the studio, shoot composite analog to the transmitter site and put it right on the air. Or you could shoot left-right analog audio, like with a Marty type system. Right. Shoot left-right and your processor had to go at the transmitter site. Right. If you had stereo phone lines, then your processor had to be at the transmitter site. When, when we could start shooting composite analog, processor could be at the studio. Right. Now when we're digital, most digital systems here to four have been left-right audio. Correct. Your processor had to go back to the transmitter site. Right. So you're saying we can take the composite generated by the processor still in a or in a digital form right transported over a fairly standard AES transport well there's going to be some new transport methods for STLs okay. if you're at your transmitter site and the processor is located at the transmitter site you can interface directly with a compatible exciter with composite AES it eliminates at the transmitter. It eliminates having an A to D, having a D to A converter at the output and A to D converter on the input of the exciter and ground loops and everything that can be associated with a coax cable that connects between two devices. Now you're going right in. It's as close to putting the actual processor into the transmitter wow. as you can get. This AES signal is it carried on balanced uh, AES three? It's carried on the balance. There's actually a couple things going on right now. The transmitter manufacturers are are carrying the left channel. There's uh, talk about interleaving a left and a right to a 384 standard. There's also talk about using the other unused channel as a secondary backup source to the first channel. So the standard is pretty much there. Everyone's calling it different, and people come in and talk about it different. Uh, Baseband 192, Omnia Direct, AES over MPX. Yeah. Everyone's got a different way of basically saying the same idea. Yeah. It's nice that everyone's on the same page with this, uh, and I think it's only going to allow the technology to grow, and it's not going to die on the vine like, like CQAM or something else where everyone was fighting over how to do this. Now, folks want to get in touch with you and help maybe get a further explanation of what you're talking about? 
How do they do that? They can just log on our website, wheatstone.com, and uh, I'm available at Mike Erickson, mike.erickson at wheatstone.com. Um, there's lots of information about it, both from Telos and from Wheatstone and from Nortel and BE. You know, basically, any one of those uh, manufacturers can, can clue you in on what's going on. Cool. Mike, thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Sir. Give my regards to Jay, okay? Take care. All right. Kelly, you want, did you want to come, on, come over and say hi to us? Yeah. Hi, how you doing? Fantastic. Now, did you go by Kelly as your first name? I do. Or, well, I mean, it's your middle name, right? Yes. But you go by Kelly. Sorry, is, I got to tilt the camera up here. Good gosh. What are you, eight feet three? How's was, the weather up there? <laughs> you're tired of those jokes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Kelly, tell us about what you do real quickly. What, what's your, what, and, and what have you seen around here? Uh, well, I used to work at a community college taking care of uh, this radio, television, high-end classrooms. So if yeah. it plugged in, I got to fix it. <laughs> you got to fix it. Great. So what have you seen at the show that's been interesting to you? Uh, mostly it's been um, big breakthroughs last year, but the fine software, things adjusted. So the products are coming out so they really work. So they're more year. ready for prime time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any particular technology or booth that's been interesting? Anything you that, oh, I'm going to plan to buy this this year. Uh, the one thing I found interesting, it's not ready to buy yet, is over in the AK television. The camera they had last year was, you know, the big thing. It had 64 cables coming out. Yeah. Now it's down to two cables. For 8K television. For 8K, yes. Now, four, 4K is, is going to be a, a standard in supposedly even figuring out ways to broadcast it. 8K? I saw this at the CES show, but we're really talking about equipment for broadcasters now, huh? Yes. Wow. That's going to, I think, change a whole lot. And do you think 4K and 8K will uh, do better than 3D did? I think so. You know, 3Ds come about every 10, 15 years. You know, it's a, a flash for a couple of years and then totally disappears. 3D always felt a little gimmicky to me, but 4K and this crazy 8K, uh, this is just a picture that just looks so realistic. It's unbelievable. Yes, I, th I think we'll see it mainly in production. Oh. Um, although they have a way to transmit it on a six meg channel, but wow. I don't think we'll see it at home. Yeah, the raw data rate of that stuff though is crazy, isn't it? I mean, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, what's what's uh, what's 4K, isn't 4K, is it three gigabits per second? Yeah, something like that. And then 8K must be, what, quad, uh, four times that? Uh, it's about four times, yeah. yeah so it's, it's 12, tw like tw oh, that's right, it's 12 gigabits per second, which won't fit on a 10 gigabit link. Right. So they're having to uh, double up, you know, d double truck, trunk some, some links. Yeah. Kelly, we're just about out of time here. Okay. We got we to go. Thanks for stopping right, thank by. Thank you. All right, take care. Chris, we've got to wrap up the show here. It so is, uh, yeah, it's 20 after. Ooh, good gosh. Our show's been, been brought to you by the Telos Alliance, the folks right behind me here. You can go to the website at telosalliance.com. And if you would, sign up for the newsletter. It's called Direct Current. Uh, we have a little blurb in there. Uh, typically, we have little engineering stories, tips and tricks, sometimes new product information or a, an alert about some new software you may want to download for a, a Telos or Omnia or 25.7 or Axia or linear acoustic product. So it's a good, a good thing to get. It's called Direct Current. But just go to the Telos website, telosalliance.com, and sign up for it. Chris, any, any, any parting words? No, no, I, uh, uh, yes, parting yes. words. As mentioned by Mr. Kelly, uh, 8K video. Yeah. On our next episode, I have pictures to show and demonstrate something. You're going to flip out when you see them. Wow. Now, uh, that's by, a precursor. By the way, it's about time TV uh, caught up. We've been doing 8K audio for years. Exactly. I think we've got 16K, even 20K exactly. audio. Exactly. It's TV's now, just getting around to Just 8K. getting around. Yep, yep. We'll keep on top of it. Hey, thanks for being with us. I'm Kirk Harnack. Thanks to Andrew Zarian back in the uh, studio. I guess it's Andrew that's back there. He's been able to sleep for the last hour because we haven't had to switch cameras. <laughs> it's on autopilot. That's right. I've actually uh, really enjoyed the show, Kirk. Alliance. We'll see you next week on This Week in Radio Tech. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>